The spice trade wasn't the only agenda of Spanish explorers who ventured to the Philippine shores in the 16th century. When colonizers landed on the Philippine shores in March 1521, they also introduced Christianity to locals. In 1571, the Augustinian missionaries were the first to settle in Pampanga. They established 20 mission centers in the province, and that includes the small town of Santa Rita. Santa Rita, with a total land area of 3,296 hectares, is a pear-shaped town in the heart of Pampanga. Bounded on the north by the mountainous terrain of Porac, on the east by Pacolor, and on the south by Wawa or Guagua, the second smallest town in the province is basically agricultural and accessible to commercial centers and market transit points via the Olongapo-Gapan San Fernando Highway. Santa Rita had its humble beginnings. Records show that sometime in 1697, the town started as a settlement at a place called Casac, now Barangay San Isidro. During those times, politically and religiously, the town of Pora managed the affairs of the town. There, it eventually expanded to a wide territory embracing today's barangays San Vicente, San Matias, Santa Monica, San Agustin, and San Juan. It was in 1724 that Santa Rita was carved out of Pora, although not as a separate parish. The year 1770 became a religious highlight when Santa Rita assumed parochial independence through the efforts of Reverend Father Eustachio Polina. For its titular patroness, the town chose Santa Rita de Casia, a 15th century Augustinian saint who was born in the Italian town of Rocca Torena, invoked by desperate people beset with seemingly hopeless problems like troubled marriages and domestic violence. Santa Rita was married to an ill-tempered husband who was subsequently murdered. Her two children vowed revenge, but Santa Rita de Casia, through her intense prayers, averted her children's criminal plot. The two fell sick and died before they could carry out their vengeance. Thus, without a family, Rita joined the Augustinians, but only after several unsuccessful attempts. The next 40 years of her life, Santa Rita de Casia devoted herself to a life of prayer and works and deeds of charity, as dictated by the rules of St. Augustine. At age 60, while meditating before the cross, a wound seemingly afflicted by a thorn appeared on her forehead. Santa Rita de Casia began boring the sign of stigmatization, which is considered being one with Jesus. Because of the stigmata, she suffered in pain for the next 15 years, which she courageously accepted. Santa Rita de Casia died on May 22, 1457. Her intact and incorrupt body is kept and honored in the shrine at her hometown on Casia, Italy. The actual construction of the church was deferred until the late 19th century. An 1835 document asserts that a certain Don Alejandro Rodriguez, member of the town Principalia, was accepted as a brother of the Augustinian order for having been a benefactor of the church. It may be that Don Alejandro donated either land or money to initiate the building of the church. Credit for the construction of the church of Santa Rita de Casia, as we know it today, goes to the town prior, Father Francisco Royo, who started the masonry in 1839. 
It was completed by Father Juan Merino in 1869. One of the church's five bells is inscribed with his name. Both priests were also responsible for opening roads linking Santa Rita with, with Guagua and Porac. The original church measured 55 meters long by 13 meters wide. Its height was around 10 meters. It has a large and well-lit transept. The solid brass facade has Baroque characteristics and the single columns are relatively slender. The pediment is enlivened by a mini retablo flanked by mini towers. The squat four-story bell tower, which attracts the eye, is somewhat balanced by the stone arcade of the rectory at the far end. Within the church are three neo-gothic and two neoclassical retablos. According to heritage conservation experts, the neo-gothic retablos may be the one of the very few in the country today. The rectory is a Spanish era Bahay na Bato, which is a blending of indigenous and colonial building principles, which makes it distinctly Filipino. It shares a wall and opens into the parish church. The parish is the site where the holy relic of Santa Rita de Casha is enshrined. The parish obtained the first-class relic of the saint through the help and assistance of His Excellency, Most Reverend Ricardo Fontana of Spoleto, Norcia, Italy, the archdiocese to which Cassia belongs. Archbishop Fontana forwarded the relic through the mediation of the Apostolic Nunciature in Manila to Archbishop Pasiano Aniceto, who in turn handed it over to the parish of Santa Rita de Cascia on August 17, 2008. It was through the initiative of then parish priest Monsignor Eugenio G. Reyes, JCD, that the relic was obtained. The first class relic is from the flesh ex carne of the saint. As noted in its accompanying certificate of authenticity, the relic was part of the last batch extracted from the incorrupt body of Santa Rita de Cascia on August 20, 1972. The reliquary is laid open for public veneration every August 17. The parishioners have a very strong and lasting devotion to Santa Rita de Cascia that is passed through generations and transcends migration. We have the 15 Thursdays Novena to Santa Rita de Cascia in preparation for her Novenario before her feast day. Every 12th of May, the parish is holding its Marcha ng Apong Dita as a prelude to the 9th day Novena in her honor. On her feast day, May 22, roses and blessed oils are given to church goers. It was believed that the oil relieves any aching part of the body once rubbed with it. May 23 is the day wherein the children of the parish are consecrated to Santa Rita de Cascia. Misa King Control is celebrated every October as a thanksgiving to Santa Rita de Cascia for being saved from the devastation of Lahar. It was believed that a miracle happened on the onslaught of the Lahar, which was heading to our town. The people guarding the mega dike saw a lady nun on the place. And on that instant, the rampaging mud flow suddenly changed course and it headed to nearby Bacolor town, thus sparing Santa Rita. The deliverance of the town from the catastrophic mud flow was more than proof of her being so miraculous. As their advocate, many people, not only Ritenians, have attributed many miracles in the lives through the intercession of Santa Rita de Cascia. From abused victims, against loneliness, against sterility, bodily ills, desperate causes, difficult marriages, forgotten causes, impossible causes, infertility, lost causes, parenthood, sickness, sterility, and victims of physical spouse abuse. Patron saint of the impossible, 
This is how Santa Rita de Casia is well remembered today because of her miracle laden life and death. Impossible to think? Yet things and events became possible. The town of Santa Rita at present proudly stands as a survivor, a town of resiliency, hard work, and progress. Known as one of the best agriculturists and farmers in Pampanga, the Ritenians preserved the beautiful tradition of farming. As a matter of fact, the people of Santa Rita were the first to adopt the native plowing system of furrowing to the depth of more than 12 inches for planting sugarcane points, known locally as Simberga after its Ritenian originator, Simeon Bergara. The town's fine delicacies like the Torones de Casoy, San Srival, and the Duman remain unrivaled up to this time. Duman, the cooked and pounded glutinous rice, famous for its green color, fragrance, and exquisite taste, has given birth to the Duman Festival in 2002, an annual exhibition of the best performing artists of the province and authentic Kapampangan cuisine. Arti Santarita, the town's iconic cultural group, founded the Duman Festival. This cultural advocacy has merited the group with the 2004 Most Outstanding Kapampangan Special Citation for the Performing Arts and the National Award, the 2000 Gawad Alab Nangharaya for Best Cultural Performance given by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. Santarita has also become an attractive site for national movie settings. Filmmakers and production designers find its heritage church and ancestral houses appealing. In the 70s and 90s, Villa Epifania located at Barangay San Jose became the main set of Lino Broca's Tinimbangka Ngunit Kulang and Doris Guillen's Tanging Yaman respectively. Numerous TV productions like the Filipino version of Marimar and Mga Mata ni Angelita were also shot in the town, among many others. In matters of religious life, the Ritenians are known for their pious and deep devotion to our Lord Almighty. The religious practices and meaningful celebrations during the Holy Week is almost always impressive in attendance with even people from other places witnessing our rites beautiful caros and religious images, and attending Eucharistic celebrations. Santa Rita, one of Pampanga's most peaceful towns, the abode of those with deep and active religiosity, a haven of warm smiles, simplicity, and unmistakable hospitality, the town of hard-working and the wise, a progressive town of limitless possibilities, the pride of Pampanga. My dear brothers and sisters who are all recipients of God's love, good day to all of you. This year we are celebrating half a millennium of Christianity, 500 years of Christianity. There is something to celebrate, not only because our country has survived many challenges not only that but because we as a country have been blessed for 500 years with so many things and the faith has influenced everything in our country our culture as a people and so there is something to celebrate and we as a third world country and we majority of the people are Catholics, Catholic Christians so we consider ourselves as missionaries who were gifted 500 years ago by the faith our faith that we have received from the conquistadores, we received it not only 
our faith, but also through the sword. We know that in perfection, but as the years went by, we were able to purify it. In our country, this is still undergoing purification. And we have been gifted, we all are recipients of the grace and the love of God. Our God the Father is only begotten Son. And so we thank God. We thank Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So we thank everyone, our great-grandparents, our parents, lay ministers, everyone who have contributed to the faith. And here in our parish, we thank everybody, all priests who were assigned here in Santa Rita, Santa Rita Paris. We thank all of them. And we, as a people in the Paris of Santa Rita, we were gifted so many things. Our faith was shared by the people of the past. And we not only celebrate the past, thank God for the many things that happened in the past, but we also use this faith for the future. And so, as a nation, and we, as parishioners in the parish of Santa Rita, we join everyone in thanking the Lord for giving us His Son for our salvation. So as a response, we are giving back to God by being good Christians in every aspect of, of our life. So we offer ourselves, our whole families, in the service of God and people as a thanksgiving for the generous giving of the Father to His Son to all of us. May God bless us all. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.